during our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk about herbicide breakdown in soil. One thing that I think is cool is that the hot topic now in agriculture is soil health. And we think about, well, we want to have healthy soil, we'll have healthy plants. The other thing about healthy soil is it's functioning properly. And one of the functions of the soil is to break down things like herbicides. Okay, so when we have herbicides, we're trying to kill weeds. As farmers, we love what we call residual herbicides that can kill weeds for a long period of time and they kill them right in the soil so we don't have to go spray post-emerge several times during the season. The problem with residual herbicides is if you use them at too high a rate or if they're just exceptionally persistent in the soil, then you can end up hurting next year's crop. That's something we absolutely don't want to do. So we're always looking at how quickly can these products break down in soil. The first thing we look at is the half-life that tells you how long in normal conditions that product should last in the soil, how many days until half of it is gone. Now if there is an extreme drought, if we don't get moisture, that's one of the factors that can lead to that herbicide sticking around a little longer. So we know that for herbicides to break down, we do need a little bit of moisture out there. Now if you get excessive moisture, it can be a bad thing too. If you have uh, rain, rain, rain every day, well, well, you can't get the biology in the soil to function either. Exactly. That's really what it comes back to. Bacteria are able to break down herbicides in soil. In addition to, obviously, if we've got lots of weeds or plants sucking that up, that's really the first thing we want. So if you're in a very weedy field or you have lots of crop growing there all the time, that's going to pull the herbicide in. There's not going to be a lot left in the soil. But if there is product left in the soil, if you have good conditions for bacteria to thrive, then you're going to have faster breakdown of the herbicide. So what are the good conditions for bacteria to thrive? Well, one of those things is a neutral soil pH or even a slightly acidic soil pH. Where we see some problems is when we get a pH that's really out of whack, where we're very acidic or on the other end of things, we're a really high soil so pH. So for example, like four and a half or five pH on the low side, eight and a half or nine on the high side. The other condition that can cause some problems for herbicide breakdown is really salty soil. If we've got saline soils where we have high soluble salts, or if we have sodic soils where we have high levels of sodium, we can really inhibit the bacterial survival out in the soils and we don't get good breakdown. The other big thing is these bacteria function when they have heat. So in very cold climates, you're not going to find the bacteria functioning many months out of the year. We live in South Dakota, I can attest to this. But if you have warmer conditions than normal, you're going to have faster herbicide breakdown than normal. Well, all of these factors will influence where, in, in, geographically speaking, farmers will use certain herbicides, what rates they will use, and the timing, and so forth, because farmers understand what it takes to get these herbicides to break down effectively. Another thing farmers understand is what it takes to control weeds like our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? 